Hello, this is a Key Woodworks production. I am not Nick Key. I am Jason Hibbs from Bourbon Moth Woodworking. But Nick's too lazy to voice over his own videos, so I'm going to do this one blind. I've never seen this video before. I do not really know what it's about, but I'm going to pretend like I'm Nick. Here we go. So first thing you're going to want to do is take a chop saw and put the battery in. <laughs> because, you know, all great chop saws use batteries. Then you're going to hook up a hose to the back and, you know, decoratively stack some wood and your coffee next to it. And then taking the smallest blade ever made, you're going to start chopping down. What is that? Pine? Really? We're using pine? Okay. Cut some pine down and then... Oh, we're still cutting pine. Okay, cut some more pine with a battery-powered chop saw. Really? Okay. Then you're going to set the pine on your CNC. That's very important. And using a brick. Nope. Is that a piece of black walnut as a stop? Yes, we see it's a stop. Okay, enough with the stop action. Then you're going to, you know, cut it some more because there's a lot of cutting involved in this. Uh-huh. Still... Oh, wow, we're cutting a lot of squares. See, you need a lot of squares for this. Some pine, sappy squares. Not You don't want them square, either. Not too square. Warped and curved is better. See, my nice stack of somewhat warped pine squares. So you're going to stack all those up, and then you're going to take some longer pieces of pine. You're gonna just slap some blue tape on them willy-nilly anywhere you want. And then you're gonna stare thoughtfully at those and then at the camera. And then you're gonna start sanding them. Usually I sand things after I complete, but for this project we're gonna sand before we know what the heck we're even doing. So once you sand one square, well, you're gonna sand another. And I'm guessing just, you know, oh no, we're not, we're not sanding anymore. Okay, then you're going to set your squares aside after only sanding half of them. And you're going to start forming your longer pieces into a box, making sure to fumble around with them and knocking them over. These pieces you don't want to be straight either. It's nice if they have a few curves and bends. The more knot holes, the better. Then you're going to take a countersink bit and you're going to add some screws into these longer pieces. Um, and just like using the world's smallest saw blade, you also want to use the world's smallest drill. You know, smaller is better. Yep, get our screws in there. I'm just, I'm guessing we're going to screw the whole, yep, screw the whole square of pine together. And that's our project. We've made a sandbox now. Oh, we're not done yet. Okay. Some more pieces of pine, and then we're going to take our cut pine squares and we're going to make them leapfrog across the piece. And we're just going to draw some pencil lines anywhere you really feel like it. And then uh, do some more countersunk holes. I assume where we did the pencil lines. Okay. And then we're going to take those smaller squares. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. And we're going to line them up. Nice, and then take some more screws and just send them in there. Yep, right into that pine. Really hone your inner fine woodworker for this project. That's right, the more screws you can fit in there, the better. You really, you can't have too many screws. And just like that, in a matter of minutes, you've created this nice book holder thing. Oh. Then we're going to take some more of those small squares and wedge them in between just to determine that, yes, none of our spaces are even. We wanted to make sure because that's what we were going for here. Now is where it gets really good. We're going to take our large square uh -huh, and stick our smaller, oh, all of our smaller screwed up pieces inside, not screwed up, screwed together pieces inside. Just like that. Yep. 
how they're going to stay together, well, <laughs> that's a mystery we'll both find out here in a second. So after we've stuck all of our square screwed thingies in, oh, we're going to put some clamps on. Why? I don't, I don't exactly know, because they're only screwed on one side, but... <laughs> If I know my buddy Nick, he has got a plan, and I just am itching to find out. Okay, so then we're going to add some more countersunk holes in the bottom. Now, if you remember, these are the one squares we hadn't screwed in yet. And then, you guessed it, we're going to sand. <laughs> I thought we were going to screw them in place too, but you're as confused as I am. Yep, then we're going to sand everything nice and even. But to my knowledge, they're only screwed in halfway at this point. Maybe there was some glue that we didn't see. I hope there was, because it seems to be stuck together at this point. Okay, then you're going to set it on the floor, really size it up. This is how we measure things in the shop. We determine how tall they are in comparison to us. If you know your height, then you know how tall it is. Okay, then you are going to take some iodine. Now, this is the exact same chemical you would put on scrapes or cuts as a child and we're going to rub it all over our square divider shelf thing. Now this is to ensure that there will be no infections of the wood at any point um, after we deliver it to the client. The last thing you want is infected wood. So just using our little swab, we're going to thoroughly coat the entire piece in that iodine, making sure to miss our countersunk hole. Oh no making sure to fill our countersunk holes in very nicely and we're just gonna keep doing this until magically i'm guessing change scenes show some lacquer and voila the whole thing is covered in iodine and then we're going to encase that iodine in a nice layer or two of spray lacquer now you want to make sure you really are just moving around a lot kind of like you you know got the jitters or something that makes sure the lacquer gets coated somewhat evenly over the entire surface and boom I, I mean then you keep going with more lacquer I feel like we've seen enough lacquer at this point I don't know about you but I'm getting tired of the whole lacquer vibe lacquer <laughs> I hardly know her am I right yeah and then Last but not least, you want to take the whole thing and set it on a moving blanket. You want to make sure you do this when it's still wet so that it sticks nicely to the moving blanket. And then you're going to cut out some pieces of paper to, um, well, to, we're going to use the paper to wipe it down with um, just any paper will do. I like to use a brown lunch bag, um, sometimes just a little butcher paper, and you're just gonna rub it. This is for no particular purpose other than letting the piece know that we appreciate it, that we really care about it. It's equivalent to a furniture massage. And then we're gonna slowly walk off camera and then magically appear again, lifting the piece back up for one final look at it and there you have it a beautiful male mug storage shelf i bet you could fit more than just one mug on there though i mean that's kind of lame you got all those holes that just aren't being used 